Chinese Communist Party is hunting down dissidents on American soil. Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Brilliant. Brilliant is an amazing tool for learning math, physics, programming, and more. It gives you challenges with interactive visuals to help you actually learn, not memorize. It's a super fun way to build your skills and intuition. I'll show you more at the end. So, the Chinese Communist Party intimidates, harasses, and undermines people who speak out against it. And it's doing it more and more outside its own borders including here, in America. Last week, the U.S. Justice Department charged five people with stalking, harassing, and spying on U.S. residents on behalf of the Chinese secret police. Three of the people have been arrested in the U.S. The other two are in China, where they better hope they don't get in trouble for being incompetent enough to get caught. These five people are charged in three separate cases. What links them all is that these Chinese agents specifically targeted Chinese Americans, and the U.S. government doesn't like that. Members of the Chinese diaspora community, both in New York City and around the rest of the country, must be free to express themselves on politically sensitive issues without fear of reprisal from the PRC government. Our office will not permit efforts by the defendants and co-conspirators to erode the civil rights of U.S. residents on account of their Chinese ethnicity and their beliefs. According to U.S. officials, these cases show the Chinese regime is exporting its repression onto U.S. soil. Great. Not only are we getting cheap made in China products, we also have to deal with cheap made in China repression, too. I'm going to get into the details of some of the cases a little later, because you would not believe some of the things these Chinese agents got up to. But first, how the U.S. government is framing these cases is significant. They say this isn't just about targeting Chinese Americans. It's also about undermining America. Transnational repression is part of the range of tactics that our adversaries employ to try to undermine our democracy, our economy, and our institutions. And it is a threat not only to the people in the United States, but also to people around the world who seek to exercise their basic rights to freedom of expression and to stand up to authoritarianism. This activity is antithetical to fundamental American values. Expect to hear the term transnational repression a lot. The FBI even has a page on their website telling people it's illegal and how to report it. So what does transnational repression look like? Well, in this first case, good old-fashioned spying. Wang Shujun is a prominent Chinese democracy activist in New York City, who has just been charged with spying for communist China. Wang moved to the U.S. in the 90s and became an American citizen in 2003. According to the FBI, in 2005, he was spying for the Ministry of State Security, or MSS. In other words, Wang was working for China's secret police. Wang had four different MSS handlers, who asked him to spy on various pro-democracy activists in the U.S. and Hong Kong. That was easy because Wang helped co-found a Chinese pro-democracy nonprofit. Wang met with his handlers in person when he traveled to China. He also communicated with them through email diaries he would write about the activists he was asked to spy on. And Wang didn't just spy on Chinese pro-democracy activists. He was also asked to spy on Tibetans, Mongolians, and Uyghurs in the U.S. as well as Hong Kong activists. The most prominent person Wang spied on was Albert Ho, a former Hong Kong pro-democracy lawmaker. Ho is now in prison for organizing protests in 2019. Although it doesn't look like Wang got a lot of dirt on Albert Ho, it shows the effort the Chinese Communist Party makes to monitor people they consider a threat. Wang's reporting to the MSS about Albert Ho likely represented only a portion of a multifaceted effort by the PRC government to track Ho. So how did Wang get caught? It's clear from the court documents that the FBI was building a case against Wang for years. And then they sent an undercover FBI agent in to pretend he was sent by the MSS to give Wang a message. What was the message? That Wang was being investigated by the FBI. 
So what did Wong do? He uh, asked the undercover FBI agent to help him destroy the incriminating evidence. Which is pretty hilarious. Well, not for Wong. The MSS is not sending their best. Something that will be even clearer in the next two cases, right after this short commercial break. Welcome back. Last week, the U.S. government charged five people with acting as agents of the Chinese Communist Party in the U.S. One of them was Lin Chi Ming, a supposedly retired MSS agent living in China. Last year, Lin contacted a private investigator in the U.S. to dig up dirt on this guy, Yan Xiong. Yan was a Tiananmen Square protester who moved to the U.S., became a U.S. citizen, and served in the U.S. Army. Then, Yan decided to run for Congress. I don't know how good his chances actually are, but the MSS decided he needed to be squashed just in case. So, Lin contacted a private investigator and asked him to either find or create dirt on Yan to undermine his candidacy. Here's an idea that Lin threw out there. What about a honey trap? Just hire a prostitute and take some photos. But if all else fails, how about some violence? You know, beat him until he can't run for election? That one's a classic. Or if that doesn't work, how about a car accident? Something to make sure that on the day of the election he can't physically get there. I guess MSS agents don't know how elections work. Unfortunately for Lin Chi Ming, the private investigator he hired, immediately contacted the FBI, and then spent the next few months recording all of their conversations and giving them to the FBI. But as thuggish and ham-fisted as Lin's actions were, U.S. officials point out that there's something bigger going on. For decades, the Chinese Communist Party has targeted, harassed, and threatened U.S.-based Tibetans, Uyghurs, Falun Gong members, and pro-democracy activists. And now, as if that weren't offensive enough, the government of China has targeted the campaign of a candidate for Congress. This is clear evidence of their efforts to undermine our electoral process. I guess according to the Chinese Communist Party, if you can't buy a politician off, you can always kneecap them. More after the break. Welcome back. Sometimes when you're trying to undermine America, you can't do it on your own. Sometimes you need a team. Let's call them the D-minus team. Frank Leo and Matthew Zburis live in Long Island, New York. Sun Qiang was their handler in China. Sun worked for a Chinese company that was acting as an intermediary for the MSS. He hired Liu and Zburis to spy on and harass Chinese dissidents. For example, he had Liu try to bribe an IRS agent to get the tax returns of a dissident. That was to create a scandal if there was something wrong with his taxes. Really? A tax scandal? At least the other MSS guy thought of setting up a honey trap. Zaburus and Liu also spied on Chen Wei Min, a dissident artist who created this statue of Xi Jinping as a coronavirus. I can see why the MSS was upset about this. Where's Winnie the Pooh? Zaburus spied on Chen, including bugging Chen's office and car. And Chen's CCP virus statue was repeatedly vandalized and then burned down after Zaburis, Sun, and Liu discussed destroying it. What a coincidence. The group also targeted Olympic figure skater Alyssa Liu and her father, who was a Chinese dissident. Zaburis was hired to perform surveillance on the family and pose as a member of an international sports committee to ask Arthur Liu for a copy of his and Alyssa Liu's passport by claiming it was a travel preparedness check related to COVID-19. I know you can blame everything on COVID these days, but this is the first time I've heard it used for spying. Leo refused to give Zaburus the information. But if that wasn't creepy enough, the FBI investigation found that the Chinese regime knew about an Instagram message Alyssa Leo had posted about the Uyghurs. And while she was in Beijing for the Winter Olympics, a man approached her and tried to lure her to his apartment. That's terrifying, and clearly in violation of Beijing's Olympic COVID bubble. But while Sun hired Liu and Zaburis to spy on and intimidate Chinese Americans, it doesn't look like they accomplished much. But if nothing else, the arrangement was lucrative. 
So Burris made over a hundred grand, while Liu made more than three million. Maybe that'll pay for some good lawyers. These are only the cases that we know about, because the FBI investigated and found these Chinese agents clearly broke U.S. laws. But the FBI believes this is happening on a much larger scale. We have dozens of transnational repression cases. However, we believe we should have hundreds. That's why the U.S. government is asking for victims of transnational repression to contact the FBI, and I hope they do. We need to expose what the Chinese Communist Party is doing in America. Plus, the incompetence of these MSS agents is always good for a laugh. And this episode is sponsored by Brilliant. If you like learning cool stuff, you'll love Brilliant. Brilliant is an amazing tool for learning STEM interactively. It's got more than 60 different math and science courses, everything from geometry to calculus, from the science of neural networks and computer programming to the science of beating Kenneth at the pool table. Brilliant is cool because it's visual and interactive. It takes you step by step through each concept until you actually get it. The idea is to help you understand challenging concepts way easier than the way you're taught in a classroom. Brilliant doesn't do lectures. It's 100% engaging, hands-on courses. It's got a huge range of courses for people who want to up their game. So watch out, Kenneth. And it isn't just for adults. University, high school students, and even middle school learners will love it. So check out Brilliant. You can try it out for free. And if you want premium access to all the courses, good news because they're offering a 20% discount for the first 200 people who sign up for Brilliant's annual premium subscription using my link. So go to brilliant.org slash China Uncensored and sign up now for your free seven-day trial. Seriously, check out Brilliant. The link is below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.